everyone i hope you're all doing really well um i've been mia from here for a little while haven't i because i have had a baby um and um it has been a whirlwind so this video is going to be a little bit long i would recommend you grab a drink um a snack possibly and sit and get comfy because we're going to dive into everything and as i said it's going to be quite long so um I gave birth on the 18th of March. Um, I was 38 weeks plus two. And so on the Friday, I went for just a routine checkup and they measured my bump again and said that I was, I was measuring small. By this point, it had actually started to annoy me a little bit, this measuring thing, because I kept getting different midwives each time measuring it. And my gut instinct was telling me that she was just on the smaller side um i wasn't a big baby i was literally just over six pounds paul wasn't a particularly big baby either and my gut instinct was telling me that she was just a more petite baby i'm only five foot one paul's not really tall i just it, it that's kind of my what my thought was um so they wanted me to go for another scan. So I couldn't get booked in for a scan until the following Monday. Um, so then on the Monday I went for a scan. Um, by this point, um, this was before we'd gone into lockdown as well. It was kind of just on the cusp where everything was a bit weird and all over the place. Um, I didn't address it at the beginning of the video either, but I have curly hair because um, I've decided that during lockdown and I'm at home anyway, I'm gonna try and kind of get to grips with having it curly again and kind of trying to fall back in love with it. I'm doing okay. I did give it a little bit of a home trim as well, but it needs a proper cut, but I won't be getting it cut for a while because I won't be going anywhere to get it cut. Um, but yes, yeah, so on the Monday, I went for the scan um, and they, said oh you have to go upstairs to the um i can't remember like the maternity unit outpatient bit kind of thing um and have them monitor you for a while and i was like oh no because i knew that that kind of wasn't a good sign so they sent me up uh, monitored me for ages and then um i could hear i could hear the kind of nurse and the doctor talking but they were quite far away from me and I couldn't quite make out what they were saying. And then all I heard was the doctor say something, something, induction. And my heart sank because the one thing that I really, really didn't want was to be induced. I kind of was open to generally um, seeing how things go. I didn't have like a really strict birth plan or anything. I wanted to try and do it as naturally as possible. I wanted to labour at home for as long as I possibly could. And then I heard the word induction and my heart really, really did sink because I knew that that was the one kind of delivery method that I really didn't want either. Um, I knew that it was kind of one that was filled with lots of examinations and things. And um, if you're squeamish, well, to be honest, if you're squeamish, you shouldn't really be watching a video about birth, should you? Um, but I am somebody who really, really, really struggles with any internal examinations. I find them excruciatingly painful. Um, I don't know if it's psychological, if it's a stress thing, because obviously like, I'm fine in other areas. Um, I don't find it anything painful, but um, I find them excruciating. Every time I've ever had a smear test, I end up having to like vomit afterwards because I find them so painful. I just really, really, really struggle with them. And I knew that with an induction, they do a lot of those throughout the process and the whole thing was just so kind of medical intervention in a way that I really, really didn't want. So I got really upset. Um, I should also mention by this point that the doctor that was on the ward was actually a customer of ours. And I could overhear her telling the um, nurse about like what good cocktails I made and things. And I was just like, oh, this is mega awkward. Um, because I was really upset. Paul was upset as well. We were both just a bit kind of confused because we weren't expecting it either. You know, I still had another two weeks. Um, and I thought that kind of I was going to be a bit overdue. And I just wasn't mentally prepared. So um, she came over and had a little chat with us and had booked me in to be induced on the Wednesday morning, which was the 18th. So um, it was a whirlwind of emotions after that when I went home. Oh, before that, actually, she did say I needed to go and have a sweep, which I was just like, great, 
it's already starting kind of thing. So we go into this room um, and it was that doctor that I kind of knew that was giving me the sweep, which was just awkward. Um, she was she was lovely, but it was just awkward. Um, and so I had the sweep, which was excruciating. Um, they, they're rough on purpose to kind of get everything going and it, it was so, so painful. Um, I then kind of had to go to the restaurant and sort of explain to like all my staff what was going on and you know like I was still rotated to work that week kind of thing so I had to go and kind of sort that out they were all absolutely great they were all really sort of nervous and upset and kind of it was it was just a very weird time um kind of you had corona looming over you as well and it was just all a bit weird so yeah I was really really struggling I came home and I just sobbed all evening um and then on Tuesday, my mum and sister and brother came over, helped me do a few bits. I went to the restaurant, did a few last minute bits that I needed to do. And then come Wednesday morning, um, we were told to be there at seven o'clock in the morning. So I got up really early, which was annoying because I was knackered. Um, we went to the hospital, we got to the maternity ward and they were like, uh, yeah, we're too busy now. Can you come back later on? And I was just like, oh, okay, this is, annoying so I went home um, and they told me to ring at 10 o'clock so I rang at 10 o'clock and they told me not to come in until 12 o'clock so I came in at 12 o'clock um, and my mum was gonna come as well because I was gonna have my mum and Paul there um, and so my mum was on her way I told her not to come like dot on seven o'clock in the morning because she was coming from a bit further away and I didn't want her to just be there unnecessarily and I thought it was going to take ages because the thing was everybody always says as well that a induced labour is a very lengthy process and it can take days and all of that kind of thing you guys were all mess messaging me saying that it could take ages and stuff like that so I was kind of mentally prepared for that and I thought there was no point in her hanging about for too long. So we went to the maternity ward. Um, I'm just keeping an eye on how long we are because I don't want to, this video to be like insanely long but it will be long because it's a long story. Um, so we went to the maternity ward and then um, we were sat there waiting for ages and then I overheard the nurse telling somebody at one of the beds next to us that um, new guidelines have just come in saying that um, there is a, that you're only allowed to have your partner um, there with you, there's no one else allowed. By this point my mum's like parking up in the car park. So I was really upset about that because the whole thing was just really like stressful and weird and I really really did want my mum there. Um, I'm getting upset just talking about it. <laughs> it. It was, it was a shitty, that part of it was just shitty. Um, so yeah, I then had to sort of say to her like, oh, I'm really sorry, like you can't come in. Um, so she, she was like, I'm gonna hang about, we'll see. And I was trying to sort of say like, you know, could they tag team it? Could like, you know, so there's only one person in the room at the time. And they're like, no, 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 no visitors, no. And I was like, let's not visit her. Like, if... I mean, I understand fully why that was the way it was. And now it's even worse. Um, but yeah, that, that was horrible. Um, I've still got pregnancy hormones, clearly, like, a month later. It's bizarre. I cry loads now. <laughs> so then, um, eventually, they took me into this room and said, right, we're going to have a look at kind of how dilated you are. Um, and when I had the sweep, the woman said that I was, like, two centimetres dilated, which they seemed to be under the impression that meant that, like, I would have gone into labour naturally anyway, but then other another doctor seemed to be under the impression that you could kind of be at that amount of um, dilation for ages anyway, so I don't know. Um, so we went in and we had to have one of those lovely examinations again. Um, and then I was finding it so painful that they said they were gonna go and get some gas and air just for me to have the examination at this point and I was like oh my god because like if I need gas and air just to have an internal god help me when it actually kicks off um so she'd gone to get the gas and air and I'm lying there and she's like doing a bit of the internal and then suddenly I felt this kind of like whoosh 
and the nurses both looked at each other and they were like, don't worry, your water's just broke. And I was like, really? And she was like, yeah, because basically what they go to do with the um, examination for that is they put like a pizzery thing in and it takes a while and then it kind of like kicks in and then you might need a bit more, blah, blah, blah. While they were putting it in, my water's broke. So then they were like, right, okay. Um, so then they were like, right, okay, go and lie down for a little bit, um, and see, you'll start to sort of get like a little bit of cramp in that, see how you go, and I was like, fine, okay. That room was literally across the hall from where the bed that we were at was. So I went to the, I went to lie down, and all of a sudden, I had this really, really bad stomach pain. Like, it felt like everything was just pushing downwards. They've got you on a monitor, they're trying to monitor, and I couldn't say stay still because I was really in loads of pain. I kept asking for painkillers um, and I kept saying like, you know, can you just give me something because this, this, this cramp's really, really bad. And they were like, yeah, 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 yeah. But we're taking a while because they were obviously busy. Um, and then I was like, this, this doesn't feel right. Like it was so, so painful. And they were sort of saying like, you know, yeah, yeah, it's cramps, it, is it coming and going? And I was like, no, it's it's constant. And it's like, you, I could feel like, every, like something was really low down and like you, like you needed to push. It was literally within five minutes of my water breaking, it just started. And then they were they were like, right, okay, I think you're having contractions. Are they, is there a space between them? And I was like, no, they're just coming like constantly. So I was like, right, I really, really need to go to the toilet. So I went to the toilet. They had to sort of come in with me. Um, and then they were timing them and they were just like, right, okay, these are coming really, really fast now. Um, we better get you onto the labor ward. So, wheeled me onto the labour ward. Paul had gone to the car to get a um, to get the hospital bag because we hadn't brought it in because I thought that you know we had ages and stuff and I thought he could go and get it afterwards. So um, he'd gone to the car to go and get the bag, and then he came back just as they were wheeling me to the labour ward, and he was like, "Oh right, okay, we we're we're off then, right? Fine." So off we went. Um, by the time we got to the labour ward, I was in so much pain, I thought I was going to pass out. It was like, they'd given me gas and air, and they were sort of saying like, right, when you get a gap, that's when you do it. But there, there weren't gaps, it wasn't like that. It was just coming so quickly that there wasn't a chance for me to kind of like gather myself and prepare for the next contraction. They were just coming like, bam, 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 like constantly so, so close together. So, um, by the time we'd made it into there, I had decided that I was having an epidural, which in hindsight, I think was, I couldn't have made a different decision at the time because I was in so much pain because they were coming so, so close together. Um, but it was just crazy. And so then they started prepping for the epidural. By that point, they were like, right, okay, let's do another examination, see how dilated you are. So she had to look, and I was nine centimetres. I don't know how on earth it had gotten to nine centimetres that quickly, but it was, it was just like... So then they were trying to do the epidural. I was in crazy amounts of pain. I, I don't remember that bit at all. Like, it was just Paul was there kind of thing, and I, I don't have any recollection of what happened um so eventually yeah they managed to pop the epidural in um they have to do with, like with your back and all of that jazz so, um then that had sort of kicked in and they were like right okay we're gonna wait they call it the passive hour i think um we'll wait for an hour and then we will um see if you're 10 centimeters and if you are then it's time to push kind of thing I'd calmed down a little bit by that point. Um, <laughs> this is, what is the matter with me? It, it was, let me just preface by saying as well that there are tons of videos out there that are like really, really positive birth stories that people have and that it's this kind of great experience and that you feel really in control and really in sync with your body and things like that. Um, mine was not like that. 
I'm fully aware it could have been worse, some people have much worse experiences than I had, I'm totally aware of that, but um, my experience was somewhat traumatic in that it was just so fast and I felt like I couldn't quite get my head around what was happening. So by that point um, we were on the labour ward and I kept saying that I wanted my mum and um, <laughs> this is obscene, it's just like, maybe I need to take a minute and collect myself. Um, yeah, so then one of the midwives said that, you know, loads of the other rooms had more than one person in there and to um, go and... Oh. Go and... Um, I think I've collected myself a little bit now. Um, I'm emotional as well because I haven't seen my mum for bloody ages. But... Um, yeah, so then my mum came in and we waited for the passive hour, they checked and um, yep, we were 10 centimetres, we were good to go. But um, about 40 minutes before that, I said to the nurse, because with the epidural you can kind of press the button and it kind of releases a little bit more, so I said to the nurse, shall I have a little bit more, because I want to make sure that like, you know, I'm not in crazy amounts of pain. Um, when I'm actually pushing and she was like yeah 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 so I did that which in hindsight was a mistake because then what happened was I couldn't feel anything when I needed to push so they usually will only let you push for about an hour so I was pushing and it was really really just like everything I didn't want it was you know like on the back of the bed legs up just not at all the kind of way I wanted to go about it but it was what it was so, um, pushing, 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 I, I couldn't, kind of, and at one point the, the midwife put her hand inside and she said like, oh, you know, like she's really close, I can feel her, um, and she was kind of using her hand to guide it, so that really helped, um, for a while, but still nothing was happening, and then... I said to the, the midwife, like, it really helps when you had your hand like that, can you do that again? And she's like, yeah, 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 and, then, and she didn't, I don't know what, what that was about. Um, and then it had been an hour and her heart rate was sort of going a little bit um, random. So I think they were getting sort of a bit concerned and also, like I said, they don't like you to push for longer than an hour. So they went um, and got the doctor who came in, who, you know what it's like a lot of times with sort of doctors, they've seen it all, they're kind of, they're not there to sort of make you feel better, they just kind of tell you what they're doing and that's it. So that kind of was a bit jarring. Um, and so um, then I could hear them talking about forceps, which I really, really didn't want, and then I could hear them talking about C-section, and I was just like, oh, is this what it's come to? Um, and then the doctor sort of said, no, no, she can she, she can do this, she's she's really close kind of thing, it's, it's okay. Um, so then I was pushing, and I couldn't really feel anything at all. I could feel a little bit of pressure, but not kind of anything really um, and so then they did manage to um, they kind of I think once they told me that her head was nearly out I was okay um, there was there were people everywhere there was so much going on I don't 100% sort of know exactly what was going on but I do remember him saying that he was going to cut so I obviously ended up having to have an episiotomy which again was something that I really 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 didn't want so he did that and it was then felt like within a matter of like a minute she was out and Paul said that it was the weirdest thing he said like it was like so as soon as her head was out she just she was there and so they passed it up to me and then they were still doing stuff and to be honest, I don't have much kind of recollection of what happened after that. It was all such a blur. It was bizarre. Um, because you're suddenly handed this baby and you're like, oh, you're, you're, you're real. It, it was the most surreal moment of my entire life. It was so, so weird. Um, 
and then they were obviously doing stitches and all of that horrible stuff. Um, I was really violently sick after labour as well because I hadn't eaten anything properly. I'd had an apple and a slice of toast that morning and then obviously it progressed so fast I didn't get a chance to eat anything and then when you have the epidural they don't like you to eat anything anyway. So that um, then I was really really sick to a point where then like they had to, someone had to hold the baby because I was puking and I don't want to puke on her. Um, but she's here now and I'm a mum and it's the weirdest weirdest thing um it's very weird to be doing it at a time like this it's very very surreal um I will do a whole video kind of like a full week postpartum whatever you want to call it um but yeah really 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 weird experience um and much more profound and harder than I ever thought it was going to be um it was it was a it was tough and I'm aware that like my experience wasn't even like a particularly tough one compared to most people's experiences so but it's it's not to be taken lightly, like it was a big deal. Um, but yeah, she's here now. Um, I was going to get her to show you in this video, but um, she's actually downstairs napping at the moment and this was the only time I had to film this video. So, um, what we will do is, I've got loads of pictures of her and stuff from my Instagram, if you want to go and have a look at my Instagram handle, is in the description box um but i'll show her in another video i'll do like a baby update or something like that and show you it properly because this video is 500 years long anyway um but yeah she was born and she was five pound nine um so not far off what i said that i thought she was going to be um but um yeah she's beautiful and like it's the weirdest thing like it's just surreal um, and we're kind of in very much a bubble kind of now especially because obviously we're all at home well the three of us are at home um, and um, yeah so she was born at I think it was six minutes past ten on the 18th of March 2020 weighing five pound nine and she is called Lola Summer Kassar um, so she's got Paul's last name, um, and Summer is her middle name, and yeah, baby Lola. She's very, 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 very cute, um, and I, yeah, I can't quite believe I did it. <laughs> I'm not in a hurry to do it again, I'll tell you that now, um, but yeah, but obviously it was, it was worth it. She's perfection. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it wasn't the most positive birth story, but it was truth um i suppose but like i said it's not the most horrendous one it's it is what it is but i hope you enjoyed this nonetheless and i will see you all soon lots of love um i hope you're all coping okay and i hope you're all staying safe